uh, before you left Gambia, what were you doing? Um, okay, I was I was studying economics and mathematics. All right. Before I left Gambia, mm -hmm. and then I was a student actually. You have, you haven't finished. Yeah, I don't finish yet. Why did you leave your study? And um, to to you? Yeah, it might be a peer play, uh, peer pressure. I can tell because a lot of my friends are going, so oh. that is why I left. Wow. Yeah, but I must say this is one of the um, one of the worst decisions I have ever made in my whole entire life. Abandoning your your study. Yeah, exactly. In like in, in Gambia. In Gambia. Yeah. The narratives with Mr. B. I'm good, and you? And I'm doing great. All right. You look you look great. You no, know, I'm just <laughs> trying. I'm surviving. All right. Okay, uh, please, there is one or two questions and I want to ask you. Okay. And I believe through this interview, a lot of people are going to learn. Okay. Right? Okay, before then, uh -huh. good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all, my great viewers. Depending on the place you are watching us from, we are back again with another episode of this program, Changing the Narratives, saying it the way it is in the city of Rome. And we are here with our big brother here. We are just going to get uh, one or two uh, information from him. Yeah. Please, I want you to sit tight because I know you are going to benefit a lot from this very interview. Please, we, as you always say, that we do reserve the best for the end, which is to say you have to wait till the end of this video. Exactly. And uh, please, with just uh, within a second, we are just going to talk to our brother here to introduce himself. Yeah. Uh, please, can you just introduce yourself to the audience? <clears throat> All right. Um, my name is Malik Jata. Okay. I am a Gambian. I mean, I am in Rome for almost five years now. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Please, sir, uh, before you left Gambia, what were you doing? Um, okay. I was, I was studying economics and mathematics All right. before I left Gambia. Mm -hmm. And then I was a student, actually. You, have, you haven't finished? Yeah, I don't finish yet. Why did you leave your study and um, decided to continue? Yeah, it might be a peer, play, uh, peer pressure, I can tell, because a lot of my friends are going. So oh. that is why I left. Wow. Yeah, but I must say this is one of the um, one of the worst decisions I have ever made in my whole entire life. Abandoning your your study. Yeah, exactly. In like in, in Gambia. In Gambia, yeah. Okay, we'll get back to that. Why you said it's your worst decision you have ever made? Yeah. Please, we'll co come back to that. Right. Okay, now you came to Europe. Mm -hmm. How have you find life here so far? Mm, um. For me, I would say it's kind of fair. It's fair and it's not fair. All right. Uh, there are days and months that I'm struggling. And also, there are days and months that I found so easy All right. to live here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, how you said you have lived here for a couple almost, of uh, five almost years. Almost five now. years, yeah. All right. Okay. Now, you decided to abandon whatever you are doing in yeah. Africa. Yeah. Come to this very place. Yeah. As you said, you said it was due to... Uh, peer pressure. Yeah, it might be kind of like a peer pressure because okay. a lot of my friends are going. Right, you just decided. Yeah. Not that really you don't have something doing no. or you don't really have vision no, in Africa. No, no. Okay. Okay, sir. Back to this question now that we are here because we have seen a lot of a lot of uh, narratives out there concerning Africans that are here mm -hmm. saying that majority of them that comes here either becomes a beggar or the women becomes prostitute. Uh, to you, what, what can you say? Because this is how the white people uh -huh. classify Africans here, yeah, that yeah. we come here to constitute nuisance. Yeah. So what, what can you say to that? Um, actually, I would say uh, that's a big lie, you know, <clears throat> because um, um, I, left with, I live with so many African people. I'm an African. Okay. So the thing here is that um, um, <clears throat> it, it, it's just that they create that thing in order to be able to see African in a different way. All right. So that the black people, the black fellas, so that people can see them in a different way. Okay. But I can tell you the truth. It's an old lie. They created it. Okay. Because when you come here as a refugee, All right. there are so many different documents here in Rome, in, 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 in Europe. Okay. You have Casi Speciale. You have a Subordinato. You have a Subsidario. You have a Silo. You, have, you can name them. But what they do is they put all of them together in one place and ask them to find asylum all right. asylum okay. so me from gambia me the other ones from nigeria and other part of the world they have no nothing in their country for, for example gambia there is no fight in our country okay um you can't put me in one place and ask me to seek for asylum if i don't have asylum mm. there is no war in my country obviously i will not have a document 
Okay. So right now, the statistic of um, the young African that doesn't have a document here in, in, in Italy is yes. about 60,000 or more. That doesn't have documents. That doesn't have oh, document. They're here. They are here. So they do that for a purpose. There are a few organizations that take the money from the government, from the European Union. Okay. Okay. They say that we're going to integrate these immigrants, these African people, so that they can be able to um, um, fit in our community, in our society, so that they can be able to work and all of that. All right. But that's not true. What they do, they put all the money in their pocket. Okay. And guess what? They don't integrate none of them. Mm. And at the end of the day, they send them out of the street. So they are without he, documents. Without document. Without document here in Rome, you can't walk, you can't go to the hospital, you can't do nothing without a document. You have no rights or any benefits. Nothing. So obviously, as a human being, you have to survive. Yeah. The survival will come. So out of that sixty thousand Africans that doesn't have document, obviously they must survive. They yeah. must do something to survive. Yeah. So I saw a lot of people, they are selling stuff. They are selling like small, small things and all of that in order to be able to live and survive. Yeah. But some of them, they can't do that. You f I was a victim because I stayed in the ghetto for two times. I sleep in the ghetto for two times. I know the, the life in the ghetto. Okay. So I don't have a choice. You know, I must go and sleep in the ghetto. So sleeping in the ghetto, you have, there are people sleeping in the ghetto with a different type of life, you know. So they, they, you become like them. You start taking drugs. I never took drug all my life, but when I move in the ghetto, I start smoking. Mm. I become a whole different type of person. Just to, because of depression and all that. I, exactly. You get my point? Yeah. I don't know if you're following. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that's what happened. They push them. To, uh -huh. They become ghetto youth. Some of them are going crazy. A lot of African people, if you look at this ceremony here, mm. this is, I'm going to say this loud and clear. This is only happening to black people. Okay. Okay. You come to Cherimini here at night. You see only black people sleeping in the street. You go to Central Milano. You see only black people sleeping in the street. Black people are the only people that are going crazy here in Europe. Black people are the only people that have ghettos in Europe. Black people are the only people that are suffering. That that is happening for a reason, because they help the Bangladesh people to have their own community. They help the Chinese people to have their own community. They help all the different races to have their own community except the african people that is exactly what is happening here in this italy in this italy and the whole, whole europe at last and these are the same people who classified africa that comes here and those people which they have pushed to that very point yeah saying that they came here to constitute museum whereas they were the one that pushed, put them in that position exactly that's the point they put them into that position and then and then go around and tell the whole world that these people they are criminals they are liars they don't want to work exactly they, they are thieves you know you understand you get yeah. my point so i know so many people young gambians i know some of them i know them since in the gambia they are very good they are very like they are good people they are good citizens they come here and they change they become thieves some of them become thieves it's not they are fault to become a thief they must survive yeah yeah. So it's a, it becomes like a survival of the fetus. You have to survive. You have to do something to survive. And you can't go back home either. You, 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 you get stuck in here. Hmm. You have to survive. You don't have no place to sleep. You know how difficult it is to not have a place to sleep here. It's, it's, it's not like Africa where you can easily uh, find a place or maybe uh, in a, win a winter, you don't have winter or no summer yeah, in Africa, every, every, every weather is calm. Yeah. But here, when it comes to winter time, it's disastrous. Yeah, I know. And when it comes to summer time, it's equally disastrous. Exactly. So, just imagine someone being outside there mm -hmm. without job, without documents. <laughs> With, he must do something to Yeah, he must do something to survive, yeah. yeah. He must eat. Yeah. He must be clothed. Yeah, I know. You understand? So I believe if he, if the person cannot even afford the money to rent an apartment, at least he must be able to look yeah. for something to eat. Yeah, exactly. That's not even the case. Even if you have a money to rent an apartment, they I'm searching a house in Roma for three fucking years. I have a job, I have a document, I don't have a house. They don't give me. As soon as they see, they hear your accent that you are a foreigner, an mm. African, a black man, they say the house is not available. Not that truly that the house <laughs> is not available. Yeah, it's available, but they don't want to give it to you as a black man, as an African black person. 
you are not entitled to nothing. So me having decomment, having a job, I'm a pastry chef. You have a job, you have a decomment and all of that, you working in the system, you paying tax. They don't give you a house. How about the those ones that are not having a job? Hey, that, that doesn't have any decomment. How about the rest of the... the, the it's, it's, it's going to be worse. Exactly. So that is why you don't blame anybody. Anything they said about African people, they push them into that. Anything they said about black people, they push them into that. Is the, is the propaganda created by they themselves in order to look at us just that way. Hmm. We are not scary. We are the most honest and the most kind person, people in the whole world. But they created that way. To make it to make us look this way that's yeah, how i can say the monster in us yeah you know one thing that i uh, continue to imagine is yeah. that whenever i come across these people maybe uh, uh in, the, in the in the in their act the, the people that are not really in their right senses let me use that very word yeah uh, so i begin to ask myself question these are people that left their country sound and healthy yeah same I can't imagine that a young guy mm -hmm. living his, his, his country mm -hmm. to this very place, spending years and months taking that tough and risky journey, mm -hmm. coming to this place and become something else. Insane. I begin to ask myself question, what happened? What really happened? What yeah. transpired? Because if not that he came to this very point, because this is the reason why we are asking this information, right? Yeah. Because it takes only us to say our stories exactly. the best way it is. Mm -hmm. Because if you allow another person, especially these white people, according to them, to say your story, they will tell it to the best of their choice. Exactly. Because that is already what is out there. Exactly. You understand me? Yeah. Okay, sir. Lastly, what will you be able to say concerning Africans mm -hmm. that are still their spirits to come to Europe here? Knowing fully well, having a lot of experience here mm -hmm. regarding to so the way they are have been treated in this very place, yeah, and uh, the privileges that they have, mm -hmm. the opportunities that they have, what will you be able to say to them that are still out there desirous to be in this place? Okay, um, I was a victim when I was in Gambia. I All think right. that I will find a good life here. At some point, I can say you will find a good life. It depends on uh, the road that you take. Okay. Okay. You can come here. You can do whatever you wanted to do, but know that this place here, the people here, they don't want you. Hmm. They don't want to see you. They don't want you living in their place. I want this to be clear, hmm. right? If you're coming here, know this. They allow you work because you are strong. They believe you are strong. That is why they allow you work for them. They believe you can do uh, like you go excess that's why they allow you work you know so if you're coming here you're coming into slavery if you are coming here you're coming into a difficult situation if you are coming here you coming here into depression and you're gonna you're gonna suffer one way or the other it's like all of us majority of all the people here all the black people that you are seeing here they are half insane mm. because of the system and how they put them in if the, I don't know if that is correct. The way they design the system. Exactly. For, for it's, black. it's already on the ground. It's not something of which we, are, we just we came and uh, we came into it. Exactly. It's already structured and it's already on that the ground. That way. Yeah, they don't want you here. They don't want you. That's what I want to say. And uh, one of the most important message that I will share right now oh. is the black people that are living in Europe here. If black people can come together and unite like the Chinese people do, the Bangladesh people do and the Indian people do, it will be a better place for African people. Mm. That's all I can say. Okay, so let me quickly ask you this question. There is this, there's something on which you said at the beginning of this uh, interview that coming mm -hmm. to Europe it was your worst decision that you ever made. Yeah. Why did you say so? Um, I say that because um, I, don't know, I don't know what depression is when I was in Africa. Mm. I, I know struggle, but I don't know what mental health problem is. Here we are not, we are not striving. We are, here we are not surviving. We are striving, okay. as you know. Okay. Um, in Africa, we don't know that. Here you don't talk to nobody. In Africa, we don't know that. We have everything in Africa. Here we don't know that. 
the people here they are suffering i have a lot of italian people i know the way they live they are not happy mm. they are suffering so that's the worst decision i have ever made i could have been in my country be something else here i am nothing they just see me as an animal walking they don't care if i live or die they don't even give me a house they don't care about me in the workplace they look at me as a slave so that's why i regret why coming into this place i could have been in my country become something else I think that you are still in your country uh, as at now. How, how, how can you imagine yourself? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll finish my university and then become a soldier. Go, go to the, uh, become a cadet officer and become a soldier. That's what I want to do. That and was my dream. Maybe be greater than this. Exactly. Maybe I will be somewhere else, different from where I am right now. People don't even respect me. Nobody talk to me. You know. <laughs> Well, yeah. this is the kind of life we have found ourselves, you know. Uh, I believe when you were still in Africa, you believe you, 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 you visioned this place to be heaven on earth. Now you came here, you've seen it yourself. So also a lot of Africans who are still out there uh -huh. that are still seeing the picture of you, thinking that there is no sound, there is no bushes, yeah. there is no suffering in anywhere. Uh, we are not telling anybody not to come here, mm -hmm. but as they are coming, let them know what they are expected to see, exactly. or to meet. Exactly. This is just it. Okay, thank you so much yeah, man. for this great time. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I, I do not take this yeah, time for yeah, granted. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah. God bless you.